Welcome to Table Talk Live. In this episode, we're going to be doing an open forum where viewers can ask me questions about my YouTube channel or about me. If you have any questions, write them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Let's go live. This particular live stream is on Facebook because we may go to playing live on Mahjong time. So I'm ready to switch over depending on how things go with the open forum. Because I, I have no idea how many people are going to join us and if I have any questions to answer. The whole idea with this episode is to open it up to the viewers to ask questions about my YouTube channel or about me. Welcome to the live stream if you're just joining. Say hi in chat so I know you're there. Can everybody hear me okay? I'm not too loud. Linda says, greetings from snowy Connecticut. Oh yes, winter is here. We're in North Georgia and it is very cold. Thank you for joining the live stream. In this Table Talk Live episode, we're just going to do an open forum where we can just chat and uh, get to know each other. Okay, so Martha says she came through via Facebook trying to figure out YouTube. All right. Okay, sound is good. Thank you, Venora. So did everybody uh, here see my channel update? Let me know if you have any questions about the channel update. There are going to be a lot of changes, but I think for the better. Based on my analytics, m my primary audience is American Mahjong players, so I'm going to niche down and focus on American Mahjong videos. I'm still going to have other versions on Fridays, but the rest of the time will be focused on, or Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, during the week will be American Mahjong. And then we'll rotate live streams on Sundays with different versions. But Monday through Thursday will be focused on American Mahjong. Welcome to the live stream. Say hi in chat so I know who's with us. And if you're brand new, write hashtag new so I can welcome you. If we don't have questions from viewers, we might just launch right into games at Mahjong time. I suppose we could do a Q&A while we play. What do you think about that? Uh, let's see, Linda says, as an American Mahjong player only, I like the new schedule. I have not yet experimented with other modes of play. Okay, excellent. Well, that's exactly why I'm making the change because almost, I would say, Probably 90% of my viewers are American Mahjong players. So we'll see how it goes. Let's see. Kim Harding says, hey, Michelle, love to watch and listen. Excellent. Thank you, Kim. Hi, Joe. He says, um, got my recent, your customer service is second to none. Just wanted to let people know they can buy with confidence. Okay, Joe, are you... Um, Oh, are you talking about the player references? 
Hi, Peggy. Welcome. Linda asked my first question. How long have you been playing and where did you learn? That's a great question. I first learned playing to play Mahjong in 1973 and I learned Wright-Patterson Mahjong. If you ever hear me talk about the Green Book, that's this. This has all the instructions for how to play the game and descriptions for 85 hands. It's a little more like Asian version than it is American Mahjong, but there is a Charleston and you do one set of passes, right across left and then you're done. So that is what I learned in 1973 and then I played that only until 1990. And then in 1990, I learned how to play American Mahjong using National Mahjong League rules. And then I learned other versions after that, after I started having meetups and meeting more and more players. And I learned other versions as members taught me how to play. Martha says she's new. Welcome to the channel. That's why, oh, she was a little confused on where to go. Yeah, so usually Table Talk is at, at Facebook because of the software that I use called Be Live, and that interfaces with Facebook. But soon, Be Live is going to interface also with YouTube. So I may take everything to YouTube only, just because I think the quality is better. No offense to Facebook, it's just the way it is right now. So any of the Let's Play live streams will be through YouTube because of the other software that I use to record or film the gameplay on my other monitor. It's software called OBS. So I use that and it interfaces with YouTube. So anytime I have an event, I will have an event posted on my Facebook page and the link to where it is going to be will, will be there, whether it'll be on Facebook or on YouTube. So there'll either be a link or it'll say live stream on Facebook. So I'll try to be more clear in my description so that there won't be so much confusion. I'm on a little bit of a learning curve going, curve going live on Facebook. So let me just catch up on chat. Oh yes, Joe with the HKOS. Uh, this little mistake, I had a, let me see, a little mistake on the Hong Kong Mahjong. I'm trying to remember what, what it was now. I think the concealed or self-pick fawn. But it's all okay now. Let's see, uh, Kim Harding says, the green book, you should make a movie. <laughs> the green book, that's a good title. Peggy asks, how does it feel being a, ro a Mahjong rock star? <laughs> I think that's that might be subjective. I don't know. But I love doing what I do. So if that answers the question, I, do, I love it. I love making these videos and sharing my passion for the game. Okay, Linda said that I'm an inspiration. Thank you very much. That encourages me very much. Um, because, you know, it is hard work, but it is well worth it. I, it is a labor of love. And um, if I didn't have YouTube, I probably would be on the couch watching Real Housewives and other, what do they call, reality TV. I don't think I'd be eating bonbons, but I be, would be watching more television. I keep very busy with this YouTube activity. So... It keeps me occupied with valuable, or it's value add, not only to me, but other people who are learning how to play the game. Joe says he just won a triple limit hand on Wright Patterson once. Most satisfying hand ever. Was that, on, uh, on, was it uh, honorable, let's see, Heavenly Twins or honor, or oh, where did it go? Is it honorable? No, honor. Honorable. It is honorable. Honorable twins. Seven pairs of winds and dragons. Triple limit. That is, oh my gosh, that is extremely rare. So kudos to you, Joe. Now, Joe, I, I didn't, I don't remember hearing that you play Wright Patterson Mahjong. 
That's a surprise. I think we only talked about Hong Kong Mahjong when we talked, but that is amazing. Kudos to you. Venora asks, what got you into doing YouTube videos? All right, YouTube videos. So there's a couple things that led me to creating a YouTube channel. The first thing is that I moved north to Canton, Georgia, which is about two hours north of Atlanta. Now, it's a little closer if you just put the ad address in Google Maps. It's really only about 45 minutes, but I live in Canton, and it's, it's uh, very rural. One, one lane roads, basically, or I guess a two lane road, you know, country roads. So to go anywhere takes a long time. It takes me a long time to get back to the city, even the, the suburbs of Atlanta. I don't really consider us to be a suburb of Atlanta. We're too far north and we're in, con in the country. It's very rural here. So because I was so far away from Mahjong players, and even giving lessons, because I, I used to live closer to Atlanta, and I was able to teach people how to play and run a meetup and teach at the JCC. I was much closer to where all the players were. So when I moved to at, uh, Canton, I was so far away, I thought, well, how, how am I going to still be able to do Mahjong and teach? And then I was at the same time watching U YouTube channels for homesteading because I moved to kind of a rural setting, I thought maybe I could get into homesteading, you know, um, preparedness and have a pantry. I don't think I would ever garden. I just, you know, I don't have a green thumb. So I don't think I ever want to do that. But I started watching homesteading videos and I thought if they could do that for homesteading, maybe I could do it for Mahjong. And that's what prompted me to create the channel. So the first thing I filmed were my lesson videos. So I just took how I teach and, and wrote it out or had it, I basically used my lesson plan and created a video per my lesson plan. And each video co coincides with my lesson plan. And if people follow the, the lesson plan, they could learn how to play by watching the videos. And then I decided to do all the skill builders at, on a recurring basis for American Mahjong because the new card comes out every April. So every year there would be new content in a way. Even though it's the same kind of video, the hands-on exercises, it's a new card. So the hands are all new. And then I added live streaming, playing at Mahjong time. And it kind of grew from there. I added other versions. And now here we are at a place where I'm now niching down, streamlining, and I'm gonna be doing more live streams. So let me uh, check on questions here. Um, let's see. Okay, back to Joe. He says he learned right pat first. Wright Patterson is a great version because you can launch into Asian versions from there or American Mahjong because there are similarities to both. Does anybody else have any questions for me? It could be about my channel or about me personally to a degree. I won't divulge everything, but I'm, a pr I'm pretty much an open book. So I'm happy to share about my life. I pretty much put it out there on YouTube, especially in my, my day in the life I have a couple of videos on when we went on vacation and some of the unboxings. And, it, and when I first launched the channel, I did vlogs where I would go grocery shopping at Asian markets. And I was um, that kind of launched me into doing Mahjong Nash and such, where I would cook some kind of Mahjong food, something that would be good for Mahjong. Finger foods, clean finger foods so tiles don't get dirty. So anyway, that kind of launched into Mahjong Nash and such. But then I got so busy with all the different versions. Let's see, five different versions, but American Mahjong has Siamese Mahjong. So that added to it. That's seven versions, and I dedicated a version to every day of the week. So I had no time for Mahjong Nash and such and no time for projects. You should see my pipeline of videos that I want to do. I have so many projects waiting 
for me to make videos for, including an unboxing from Gladys Grad. I can't wait. So let me check on the questions here. Uh, Irene says that she enjoyed the table, enjoys the table talks immensely, excellent or tremendously, very good. I hope to do those on the first Tuesday of the month. And since my schedule is has been streamlined, I might even be able to do them more. We'll see. Right now, it's the first Tuesday of each month, and more times than not, I, what I think I'm going to do is. If I can have a guest with me, we'll do a side-by-side, -side. and in, whether it be interview or just chatting together with you, um, or it could be an interview situation for maybe a book review or things like that. And then if I'm unable to find a guest, we'll just talk the two of us about some kind of a, top, a topic, like this particular open forum, or maybe a discussion on etiquette, or running a group, teaching the game, things like that. So my hope is to have guests on so that we could have variety and I could maybe introduce more people from the Mahjong community that might be interesting. One thing that I might do is have an open forum like this every December at the end of the year, just kind of make it a tradition just to chat. Let's see, what do we have here? I'm gonna check on chat. Live, okay, Linda says that live play is your favorite because you can watch the strategy, thought process in action. Linda, you're gonna be happy. I don't know if you're available during the day, but I'm gonna be, beginning in January, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add, let's play live streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm thinking from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll try that slot and see how it goes. And I think I'm going to do American Mahjong, the four-player game, on Tuesdays, and then maybe Siamese Mahjong on Thursdays. I'm not sure, though, because Slava does Siamese Mahjong, so that might be too much for the community. So I'm thinking maybe of starting the four-player game on Tuesdays and Thursdays and just focus on the four-player game during the week. Since I also do a live stream for Siamese Mahjong on the third Sunday of the month. So we'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll see what you all want to do. If you all want to focus just on the four player game, we could do that. So let's see. Um, Irene says she likes strategy theory. That's good. I like it too. I've been testing some other ideas. So I have more to come on strategy theory. Uh, let's see. Linda asks, do you choose points first or ease of making the hand? Okay, so Linda, are you referring to American? What version are you referring to? American Mahjong? Um, so Linda, we'll get back to your question. Uh, really, it doesn't really, my answer doesn't really affect the way you worded your question regardless because no matter what style I play, unless I'm playing in a tournament, I really play for, I play a hand or a, or a category or type of hand based on the tiles that I have and I try to leverage the strength of the hand, whether it be Hong Kong Mahjong, Japanese Mahjong, MCR, American Mahjong, Wright Patterson, I let the tiles tell me what to play. And the value has little to do with it, but it is situational because Wright Patterson Mahjong is a little different. They have single, double, and triple limit hands. If I'm playing Siamese Mahjong for Wright Patterson, I want to go for double limit hands because the total value is compared and you got to have some high value hands to take the game. So I think it really depends. Uh, oh, for American Mahjong, I let the tiles tell me what to play unless I'm playing in a tournament. If I'm playing in a tournament and I have the ability to push a quint or a pair hand or even a concealed hand, I will do it. However, if I'm set for a, a 25 point hand, if I can win quick, that's good too. So it really depends on speed to completion or, 
where I am in my place, how much I've won or lost. If I'm in the middle, it really doesn't matter. I, I'm there just to have fun. Well, really, when I play in tournaments, I'm there just to have fun anyway. I don't, I don't anticipate placing. There are a lot of really good players who go to tournaments. So if you have a, if you have a good day, you can place. And you just never know. It's, it's better to go planning on just having fun rather than placing. Otherwise, you could be disappointed. So I try not to think about it that, that way too much. Now, what I do in a tournament, if they have prizes, I force hands to win a prize because I, I probably won't place. And if I force hands to win a prize, at least I go home with a prize, whether it be cash or a bottle of wine or a gift certificate to a restaurant or something like that. So that's one thing I do focus on. Not so much the value, but more about prizes or some, you know, that type of a thing. So I hope that helps. Okay, so let me catch up on the chat here. Let's see, Kim Harding asks, what time do you start the session? You're three hours different, Pacific time, it's 4.20. Um, all my live streams start at 7 p.m. Eastern, but coming, beginning in January 1st, I'm going to be doing live streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern. It'll always be Eastern time because I'm on the East Coast. Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 4.30. Oh, good. Irene says that's good. We'll try it out and see how it goes. And, uh, it, you know, if, if there's interest, we'll do that. But also, I will record them. So speaking of which, I hope I hit record. Okay, I did. Um, so we will record them so they'll be available to watch a repost after the live stream if you're not available. Okay, let's see. Martha asks, very excited to have a greater emphasis on American Mahjong. Oh, excellent. That's what I was hoping for. You like the live streams because of you and your presentation or manner. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, very good. Anybody else have any questions? Oh, Linda says she can't watch during the day. That's okay, though, because it will be recorded. And it takes me a little while to repost because I, I have to, uh, usually live streams are an hour and a half long, maybe two hours long, and that takes time to produce. So I have to edit it and then upload it. And we'll see with the new schedule, I may be able to do it the same day. It'll just be uploaded later. So let's say if, I'm, uh, if I go from three to 4.30 and then produce it, it maybe will be up before 9 p.m. that day. Or if something comes up, maybe the next day at the latest. All right, let's see, Venora says, my group plays for fun, but we play by National Mahjong League rules, and we play to win, no money or points, just hands. Okay, that's good, and I, I know a lot of groups play that way also. So as long as everybody agrees and has fun and pushes themselves, to play a good defensive game, that's okay in my book. I think some people have uh, sometimes get the idea that when you don't play for money, it's a different kind of a game. And I have actually experienced that in, in my own sphere of influence, that if people don't play for money, the game is typically not as defensive a game. They may throw the winning tile at the end willy-nilly and not worry so much about who wins because there's no money involved. So it does seem like for some groups that the level of defensive play is increased when there is a pie. All right, <clears throat> Cynthia says strategy is my choice. Being new to the game, have, have learned quite a bit watching you. Excellent. Well, welcome, welcome to the game. So Cynthia, how long have you been playing? Anybody has any questions that they'd like to ask, write them in the comment section. I don't think I've missed anything. Oh, let's see, I did miss one. Let me see, maybe, let's do this. Anytime you have a question, write hashtag, let's see, oh, I know, write it in caps, 
any question, write it in caps. And that way I can scroll through and zero in on caps. Okay, so let's see if I missed anything. Looks like I did. Um, somebody said that they 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 have. Uh, oh, you saw Riley on the floor. <laughs> you saw Riley down there in the kitchen. <laughs> He's a little poodle Bichon. He's a naughty boy, but we love him. He's a he's a rescue, and uh, he's been part of our family since. Let's see here. Uh, we've had him for about seven years, so I guess we got him in 2012. I guess eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that sounds about right. So he he's a a funny little dog. All right, let's see. If I missed anything, see, um, do you strategically choose a hire? Oh, okay, we already asked, answered that question. Linda asked, do you choose points first or, oh, no, no, we answered that. Okay, Martha asks, as a general rule, do JCCs and synagogues welcome non-members to games? I think it depends on a synagogue whether or not they open it up to non-members. And since I'm not Jewish, I, I don't have personal experience with that. I do have some friends who play at synagogues, and some are Jewish and some are not, and they are welcome. So I think it depends on the synagogue. So you would just call and ask if this is an open drop-in game. So would non-members be welcome to the game? And then as far as JCCs, same, same thing for, for my JCC in Dunwoody, Georgia, the Marcus Jewish Community Center, all anyone is welcome to come and play the game. But if you are a non-member, you have to pay, I believe. So I, I believe that's how it works, and that may or may not be true for other JCCs. So you would have to call to find out. Okay, let's see. Oh, there's a cap. I got right to it. Thank you, Peggy. So Peggy asks, what is my day job? Yes, I do work part-time. I work 30 hours a week. It feels like full-time, 30 hours a week. But what's wonderful about it is that it's a virtual job. The company is the Energy Link, which is an energy company in the multifamily housing market. We're getting ready to expand into other markets, though. Um, so they are actually, they used to be located out of Atlanta, but they moved to Texas. And from the beginning, it was a virtual office. So everybody who worked with the Energy Link worked from home, and that's the way it is today. So it's a virtual job. And uh, I was an independent contractor at first, and then they hired me as an employee. So I'm an employee. I work 30 hours a week, but I get to flex my schedule. So I work from 7 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon, Monday through Thursday. And then I work two hours early in the morning on Friday. And all that other time after that, I work my YouTube channel. So I probably work between the two. Well, I think my YouTube channel is a full-time job. So I probably work about 60, 70 hours a week between the two jobs. Oh, <laughs> Venora said she saw my husband. Did he, did he peek in here and stick out his tongue? One time I was filming and I had to step away for some reason. And later when I went to edit the video, he poked his head into the video and recorded silly behavior. He acted like a clown in the video. I almost put it in my blooper reel for this year, but I decided not to. So uh, let's see. Uh, Martha says she has a rescue standard poodle and uh, she knows about Naughty, yeah. You know, the Riley, our little poodle, was astray. So, and we don't know how long he was astray. We know it was a long time because he was matted so badly they had to shave him down to the skin. So, he, he what we think happened is maybe he was either abandoned or he got out as a puppy and, and was just astray in the streets and abused because he had 
it took him quite a while to get used to being around us and um, he still has trouble with strangers so anyway um, it's wonderful I think to rescue if we ever get another pet it would be a rescue as well it just warms my heart um, and it breaks my heart when we go to the kennels to see all those animals there just wanting to be loved so it, it was a pleasure to be able to welcome him into our family let's see um, okay here's another question Heidi says I'm teaching some friends what do you think is the hardest part for newbies to learn the hardest part I think is reading the card reading the card and picking a hand because really they kind of go hand in hand when you look at that card and think oh my gosh all these numbers and letters and colors there it's overwhelming and then you have to figure out well what am I going to play out of all this so it kind of goes hand in hand reading the card and how to pick a hand which is why I focus a quarter probably or well, I'd probably say more like as far as my lesson is concerned almost an hour is spent on reading the card because of the way I step through it I start at a high level and then I drill down to detail and we don't even really get to the card for an hour and I focus on the tiles and the blocks of tiles so people understand what a what a single pair Pung Kong Quint and how the suits work together and then I introduce the card so I don't know um, Heidi have you seen my my lesson videos the fundamentals playlist because those videos follow exactly how I teach verbatim and I've had great success with this method of teaching okay so Cynthia said she's been playing for two months excellent welcome to the game So let's see, Peggy asked about my day job, so I got that question in there, and then teaching, let's see, I don't think I've missed anything else, I'm just going to scroll through and see if I missed anything. Okay, oh there we go. Um, we have another another question from Heidi yes thanks for the videos okay so she did see the videos you felt that reading the card would be hard to spend a lot of time on that yes I think once people learn how to read the card and pick a hand then ev everything else can come later the decision making the skills that go along with decision making and then uh, strategy the primary focus for the first lesson would be working with the tiles and reading that card because then you can pick a hand and then of course building the skills and going into strategy could come later okay um, let's see Martha says you're saying it's a game of multiples not a game of suits is what I didn't understand in the beginning okay so what I meant from that and Linda I do see your question there so we'll get to that in a minute but what I mean by that is let's see here let me pull up my analysis for the new card that I did in 2019 I'll see if I can find a statistic on it but on the card from any given year about 80 percent of the hands have pairs pungs kongs and then of course you have quints but the there's only four hands for quints but 80% of the hands on the card use pairs, pungs, and kongs. I call those multiples because I don't want to always say pair, pung, kong. I just say multiple. It covers them all. So 80% of the hands are multi have multiples. So if you focus when you first get your drawn hand on your multiple and build around the multiple as your starting point, you can leverage that strength and pick a category that best uses the multiple with your supporting tiles from your hand to set you up for success by the end of that Charleston and as far as the suits let me just see if I have a statistic on there 
the one suit hands are are the mixed suit there are way more mixed suit hands than one suit hands so that's why I say it is not a game of suits so for example if you get your drawn hand and you have maybe nine let's say you have seven cracks two dots and two bams and then maybe a winter dragon or a flower or something like that some people might be drawn to just those cracks but if your multiples are with the other two tiles like the bams or the dots or let's say that you have evens with those other tiles and there are more evens in your one suit you could play evens and not even use the one suit concept so it's really more about multiples than it is about suits and and also the categories on the card so if you look on the categories on the card for the one suit hands let me just look really quick and see if I can find that um, analysis quickly here to support what I'm saying <laughs> National Mahjong League card launch new card analysis here we go I think this is it okay so I see a few comments here so we'll get back to that alright here we go I found it now let's see if I have in here hands in one suit including jet dragons excluding wins all right, you ready for this statistic? 32% of the hands are one suit versus 80% being multiples. So it's really more about multiples than it is about one suit. Now, if you happen to have a one suit, one suit potential that has multiples in it or no gaps, then I would totally go for it. So it's very situational, but the focus shouldn't be on the suits per se, but more on multiples. So I, I hope that makes sense. Um, oh, okay, good. So she says it makes sense. I think learning, or I kept thinking in terms of consecutive numbers within a block, which was totally wrong. Oh, reading the card and choosing a hand is the hardest part, Cynthia says. Okay. All right. So I think we caught up, and I'm going to leave this statistic, um, this analysis up just in case we have this come up again. Um, and I do have a video on my card analysis, even though we've been playing with it a while, there are some interesting findings on there. And I'm not a statistician. I am not, I, I do consider myself to be analytical, but my math is not great. I use an Excel spreadsheet to help me with the, the formulas and whatnot. And I do my best, but I am not a statistician. Is it a status, statistician, statistician, statistician? Anyway, I'm not trained with statistics or analytic, you know, an analyzing data at a deep level. This is just a high level analysis of the card in comparing different patterns, diff the the different categories and things like that. So if you'll look look at my video for the new card launch every year I'll do it. So I'll do it again for 2020 and compare this year with the 2020 just to make a comparison to hopefully shorten a learning curve for everybody. That's my goal in doing that exercise. So Linda asked how often do you play live? I play live probably, uh, well, up until last month I played maybe once a month live. And then when I've, I'm changing my schedule and I created a, a meetup, a local meetup, and we were playing every two weeks, but I can't go every two weeks depending on my filming schedule. So uh, I was trying to play about every two weeks, and now that I've streamlined my schedule, that opens my schedule to play more often. I, I used to do about 64 videos a month. I believe it's 64 videos. I'm down, I cut that in half by streamlining. So my workload will be cut in half on a recurring basis, but I'm still going to work on projects. So I will still have daily videos, but they'll be more project based and live streams. So I hope to be able to play more and I may even vlog them. 
So let me know if that's something that you would be interested in seeing. I would vlog on the way there, maybe. I don't know. Some people get nervous vlogging while driving, but I would do a hands-free. So vlogging there, letting you know what kind of a group I'll be playing with, and then giving you kind of a synopsis of what happened during the day, maybe include some photos of the, the game as we go, if, if the players there want to be on YouTube anyway. So we'll see. It's an idea that I've been thinking about because I would like to, to vlog and learn learn how to do a vlogging style because I hope to travel some and be able to almost be like a, a correspondent in a way. It's just a thought at this point. No, no um, hard and fast plans in that, that way. It's just something I've been thinking about to bring more ver you know, variety to the channel. All right, let's see. Oh, Linda said that she loved the idea of vlogging. Okay, excellent. One of the interesting things is right across the street from the place that we play is a Korean market. And anytime I go to play Mahjong, I stop at that Korean market. And there's all kinds of Asian stuff there. It's all Korean, though, which is, you know, it's good food. And their produce is amazing. And so... I'll stop in there and buy a lot of produce primarily, but they also have some Asian things. Like I bought a bunch of chopsticks there um, that were really nice, and they have a nice plant section and things like that. So anyway, I used to vlog when I would go to the Asian market, and I did kind of a, a Korean market grocery haul video. I haven't done them in a while just because I've been too busy. But it, it was fun, and that would coincide with Mahjong Nash and such. So I would maybe vlog a trip to the Asian market, buy some food that might work for a Mahjong party, and then come home and cook it and maybe have a fun piece of service wear or something like that. That was the whole concept around Mahjong Nash and such. There are quite a few videos out there if you're interested in it. And, of course, I'm just a home cook, so it it's it can be kind of comical because of, you know, I'm clumsy and silly. All right, let's see. We have yes for vlogging, Marcia said. Okay, Venora asks, what is vlogging? Vlogging stands for video um, log, or um, it's basically a blog with a video. So you're video logging your day. And usually vlogging is a daily thing, and I certainly wouldn't do that. My vlogging would be um, maybe maybe once a month or maybe probably just once a month would be all I have time for because I really want to focus on projects. I have so many videos that I want to make on other versions. I want to refilm my Wright Patterson and Hong Kong Mahjong lessons. Someone asked me to do a, a lesson um, on Ricci because there's a tutorial that I share about, but it's three hours long. So some people have asked me to condense that into a lesson. So I'm just learning that myself though. So I got to think that one through, but I would like to do a lesson on Ricci and share a method of teaching that version called the Tibet method, which is really great. And it's a great method for even learning Hong Kong Mahjong. So um, I will look at adding that method into those videos. So we'll see. That, that could even probably be used for Mahjong competition rules. And it's a um, more of a, um, what do you call it, um, progressive method of teaching. Instead of just giving you four, 13 tiles, you, you get first you get four, then seven, then 10, etc. Or not 10, 11, something like that. But it's a progressive approach. So people learn quickly when you don't overwhelm them, which is kind of the way I fashioned my American Mahjong lesson. It's a progressive lesson. You don't just give them the card and tell them to find a hand or point it to a hand and have them play. That's a really hard way to learn the game. If you do a more progressive approach, it's not as overwhelming. All right, let's see. Kim says, 
when you watch Slava play, I feel he's not as an instructional and clear on his choices as you are. Okay, and that may just speak to the style of play. And I, I don't, I'm not sure how long he's been doing live streams, but, um, and I believe he's newer to American Mahjong. He, he's, his experience, I think, is in Ricci Mahjong. So he's kind of new to the game himself for American Mahjong. So that may be part of it as well. But it's nice to have that as an option because every player has their own style of play. The types of hands they go for, where they find the strength in a hand is different. How people arrange their tiles is different. The decision-making process is different. When they switch to defense is different. So with, I think it's a nice option to see other creators out there doing Mahjong videos because everybody plays differently. Well, I wouldn't say everybody. I mean, I do see commonalities. And that's where I, I made some videos on style of play. Really, it's more about style and um, maybe method, style and method or mode. I'm not sure. I don't remember the terminology that I use, but how you set up your tiles and make your decisions may be one way, and then strategy is something a little different than style. So anyway, I have several videos on it. If you want to look for that, um, it will be in the Skill Builder playlist, under, and it'll be called Style, and then the others will be strategy, but there's a couple on style of play, basically fixed versus adaptive and hybrid. So three different general styles of play is what I have observed over the years for American Mahjong. Okay, Heidi says that she agrees that uh, watching others play is valuable. Yes, I think it is. So... Uh, let's see, Kim says, agreed, but you are more, much more helpful. Oh, oh, that's nice. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad about that. All right, so I have a question for you. In regards to the live streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays, one of the things, I see your question, Peggy. I'll, let me, I want to finish this thought really quick because I want to get your input on this. One of the things that I was thinking about was, the live stream on Sunday night is really very social. It's interactive, of course, because it's a live stream. And that's what live streams should be. It's about community. So live streams will always have a social element with chatting. That won't ever change. But for the Tuesday, Thursday live stream, I was thinking about focusing one day for beginners where we talk about fundamentals and really focus more on the fundamental decision making and then have the second live stream focused on advanced strategies what do you think about that i'd love to get your input maybe tuesdays for beginners thursdays for advanced and we could focus so maybe be people who consider themselves to be a beginner maybe won't be as overwhelmed or self-conscious asking questions that are fundamental if they have a have a special live stream just for them and then on the advanced side we can focus on advanced questions and concepts and beginners of course would be welcome and they'd even be welcome to ask questions but the focus would be more on advanced topics. So let me know your thoughts on that. Okay, so uh, let's see, Peggy asked, talk about how viewers can help me. Thank you for that question, that's wonderful. So there are several ways that viewers can help with the channel. Number one is to comment below the videos. So as you're watching a video, if you're wondering why I made some kind of a decision, write it in the comment section. With American Mahjong, really with any version of Mahjong, 
beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So I may see one thing and you may see something completely different. That's why I like to do um, the hands-on exercises because people can say, well, I would have gone this way or I would have gone that way. And then I can have a dialogue about it and we could debate it even in some cases is and I can say well this is why I went the way I did and sometimes I would come back and say that was a better choice what you recommended so I'm not always 100% right I you know I make mistakes and I miss things so having that dialogue is very helpful and it also inspires me to make other videos so when people comment on videos that is fodder for me it, it helps me to see needs of players so if somebody if people keep asking the same kind of questions I'll know well maybe I should make a video on that so comments are would be very very helpful the more people comment the more dialogue we have and it also builds community so that I think is the, the best way to help with the channel. As far as, uh, oh, and then also joining my Facebook group because we can have, excuse me, we can have conversations there too. We could actually have m more conversations on Facebook. So if you join my Facebook page, that's a great place to go as well. And you could write questions on there, comments, concerns. Uh, we can talk about strategies and uh, rules and situations that happen in a game that may or may not fit under a particular video. So if you join my Facebook group, that would also be another great way to help with the channel. And it'll help build the community and give us another way to communicate with each other. Let's see. Oh, hi, Chris. Welcome to the live stream. We're just chatting. And, of course, this will be available on a repost so you can catch up. Uh, let's see, so other ways, that primarily, I think, are the two ways as far as communications are concerned and, and help, helping to um, open up a way for us to communicate, dialogue, debate even, and then also it does build community and awareness for the channel itself, which leads me to other ways that viewers can help with the channel. Uh, as far as giving the channel greater visibility. And, and that speaks to the YouTube algorithm so that others can find the channel. For example, if somebody goes to a search engine on whatever browser they're using and they type Mahjong lesson, whether or not my YouTube channel shows up, it, it depends on how they word their question and what keywords I use in my video in my um, metadata or the back end information on my videos. So when viewers like, share, subscribe, and comment, those four activities, those all help promote the channel because it tells YouTube that there's interest there. The more interest in the channel, the more they will promote the channel. So it will be found in searches, not only in YouTube, if they if viewers go straight to YouTube and search YouTube, but also since YouTube is owned by Google, if they Google it, which is the really the flagship search engine, then they'll find the videos. And I believe that the more confident the player the more fun we'll all have. And that's really the whole idea behind why I do what I do, taking the videos and, uh, to, the, to YouTube so that more people can learn and build their skills means we could all have more fun. So all those ways of helping the channel are listed under every video. And this was a recommendation by uh, Peggy, which I greatly appreciate because it has helped my channel immensely. We are almost at 10,000 subscribers. I just got chills. 10,000 subscribers. And if I, if I did not have viewers like Peggy and Chris and really, I mean, it would take me forever to name them all because there are so many viewers who have befriended me and encouraged me and 
I'm going to get emotional here, sorry. But I just am so grateful uh, for where this has gone. I mean, it just amazes me. I can't wait to see where it goes from here. It, it just really is a wonderful thing. And it's, it's, I just added so much to my life primarily because I'm really isolated. <laughs> you know, I don't have any family or friends where I live and you all have become my friends. I have made so many friends through this YouTube channel. And so I'm just very grateful for the support, the encouragement, all my subscribers and viewers and channel members and people who've made recommendations and comments. I mean, I appreciate it all so much. So, um, yeah, sorry for the tears. I just, uh, I know that's awkward. <laughs> Hope I don't get mascara running all over my face. Maybe I need to hire hair and makeup. Just kidding. Of course, I wouldn't do that. Let's see here if I can check on something here. Um... Oh, Heidi says she loves that I make mistakes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. And uh, you will see some of that in my blooper reel that is scheduled for New Year's Eve. I'm going to do a blooper reel every New Year's Eve. So the first one that I did was like 25 minutes long or something. That's way too long. This one's only nine minutes long. My husband said that it should be five minutes. And I told him there's no way. There are too many boo-boos for five minutes. So I cut it down to nine minutes. Uh, let's see. Oh, Martha uh, says, I, I like live streams for beginners and then the others for advanced. I would watch both. I would stick with beginners to really learn but lurk <laughs> on the advanced until you get to that level. Okay, that's good. Well, we'll, I'll, um, maybe we could start it off by just having Tuesdays as beginner and Thursdays as advanced and just try it out and see how that works. And if, if um, we'll, we'll just look at how many people come and watch and if, if, there's, if it's helping people, we can continue, but otherwise we'll open it up to all levels. But I kind of like the idea because I think sometimes it can be a little intimidating to it, beginners might feel intimidated to pose a question, but if they know that it's a beginner session, they might be more likely to post a comment. We'll see. Uh, let's see. Linda asks, what about ads and likes? Do they help? Yes, they do help. So the thing about the ads, the, the ads that play are targeted so uh, th they're targeted based on your behavior, how, what videos you watch, and whether or not you click on ads and things like that. Um, so YouTube ha pulls information based on your history, your watch history. And when the commercials play, YouTube creators get a percentage based on watch time. So the longer viewers watch videos, the more YouTubers create or YouTube creators earn. And it is fractions of pennies, but it adds up. So for YouTube creators, the more people who watch your videos, the more watch time you have, the more ad money you are you earn and the likes are really more to show YouTube the interest level in the subject matter or the content on your channel so if you get likes and views watch time is what it's called then they will promote your channel more I hope that helps. It can get a little technical. So 
I won't go on that into the deep technical part of it just because I myself don't think I would explain it correctly. I have to watch videos to understand it too. All I know is that if you like, subscribe, share, watch the commercials, that all helps the YouTube creator. So if I'm if I watch if I have a YouTube YouTube channel that I like to watch, I'll watch the commercials. And that helps them. Um, I have heard of some people who put on someone's channel and let it run all day. I mean, I, I would never recommend something like that um, just because I like to use my iPad uh, as background noise, so I don't know if I, would, if I would do that or recommend it. But basically, if you just watch the videos and like it if you like it, don't like it if you don't like it, um, but likes do encourage me when I see that people like my videos. And anytime I get a thumbs down, I would like to know why. You know, is, is it my mannerism? Did I um, offend somebody? Or is there something I can do better? If anybody just gives me a thumbs down, I would love it if there would be a comment so that I know how I can improve. Some, a lot of times, you know, I look at, I read every comment and I try to, com I try to reply to every single comment. Sometimes I'm a, a, a day or two behind, but I've, to date, I've been able to comment on every, or reply to every comment. Eventually I won't be able to as we grow. But um, when there's a thumbs down, if I know why, then I can improve what I do. So, um, and then if there's ever anything disparaging or, or really negative or uncalled for, of course, I can delete the comment. And thankfully, I've never, I've rarely had to do that. I think I've maybe banned two people in two and a half years. And I have deleted maybe, I don't know, less than a handful of comments. So I've been very blessed with a, a wonderful, caring, kind, supportive subscriber base and viewer base so i'm very grateful for the community that we've built it's a very healthy and um, supportive group let's see we have uh, let me just double check here um chris says she gives me thumbs up when she watches so it helps her let's see so we'll help you more if i comment too oh yeah it comments the comments show interest but I'd only want you to comment if you if you feel that you have something um, worthwhile to share. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want. I don't want to put a burden on on anybody. If you like my video, click like. If you have a comment that you want to share, please comment. But I don't want anyone to feel burdened um, to work for the vi work for the channel. Watching the videos, like, subscribe, share, comment when applicable, when right for you, that would be greatly appreciated. I do appreciate the sentiment. If you want to comment under videos, even just saying, you know, um, uh, that was interesting, or I would have done this or that, or have you thought about doing this, or, you know, what have you. It could be, be anything, but um, comments do help with visibility to the channel because it shows activity, which shows interest and that is what the algorithm looks for when promoting channels let's see oh i guess i'm the bomb i'm the bomb does somebody here have teenagers isn't that what they say you're the bomb okay let's see um Okay, Don, Don Miguel, I'm not sure if, if that's your, your name. I see that you're brand new to the game. You inherited an old set. The manual is horrible. <laughs> I know, they are terrible <laughs> because they've been translated and, you know, eh. yeah, they're, they're terrible. Let's see, you've learned from my videos. They see there are a few resources. Your set has no joker, so you're confused. The best site to learn. Okay. So uh, are you learning Hong Kong Mahjong? If there's no jokers, that's probably an Asian, for Asian versions. Are there numbers on the tiles so that you know what the cracks are? Or are there no numbers? Let's see. Um, <laughs> K 
Kim says, what's the best site to learn? Michelle's, of course. All right. Oh, hi. Jingles is here. That would be Gloria. She's a clown in real life. Uh, so no worries. Um, we've just been chatting and people have been asking questions. This is what I was hoping for. Open forum where people can just ask questions about why I do what I do, where the channel is going, things like that. Um, okay, so Don Miguel says there are numbers, so but no jokers, and it's an old set. Um, when the game first came to America, I don't know how old the set is, but there were uh, no jokers. Jokers came later. So the flowers were used as jokers, actually. So if you want to know more about your set, go to Mahjong That's It Facebook group, if you use Facebook. On there is a lady named Johnny, Johnny Levine, and she is a uh, vintage Mahjong curator. Uh, she refurbishes and replenishes vintage Mahjong sets. So she, if you post photos up there of your set, she and other community members can tell you about it. So um, go to Mahjong That's It Facebook group and post some photos and say, I'd like to know about this set that I inherited. Can anybody help? And then you'll get all kinds of comments about the set. But take photos of all the different kinds of tiles, like put, put all your winds and dragons together, put your flowers together, put your suits together, like all your bams, all your dots, and all your cracks, or at least one of each in a line, like one through nine in bams, one through nine in dots, one through nine in cracks, then all your winds and dragons, one of each, so that everyone can see the different tiles that came to the set, with the set, and they can tell you about it. It's also helpful to take photos of the top side and the back, because then they can see the what the materials are that were used for the set to help you date it and maybe identify a manufacturer and that type of thing. It depends on how much you want to know. But there are people who can tell you everything you want to know about your vintage Mahjong set at Mahjong time. And there are a couple other Mahjong groups, uh, Facebook groups that do that. I think mostly Asian Mahjong or Asian something or other. I forget the name of it. I'll put links in the video description below for a couple of the... Um, Facebook groups that I belong to that might be helpful to you. All right, let's see. Oh, Jingles watches every day. Awesome. Thank you for that. All right. Well, we were able to take this open forum for an hour and 10 minutes. I, I wasn't sure if I would have enough discussion to take it even this far. So thank you so much for participating and for asking me questions and joining me on this open forum. Uh, Gloria said, happy you are doing so much more, but I have a hard time just getting on your stuff as it is. Oh, you mean watching the videos? Well, one of the reasons why I decided to niche down is because people commented that they are overwhelmed by the sheer volume of videos that I have. And I think um, there are a lot of videos because I, I have been doing videos for two and a half years every day for uh, five versions and two of those versions are Siamese Mahjong. So that's two and a half years of uploading videos every day. So I can see why it would be overwhelming. So I thought to myself, I would, I have enough of a library built up for Asian versions so that anybody who's learning the game has enough binge-worthy videos to go through to learn how to play the game. There are playlists with, I don't know, three, let's see, three dozen videos each or more. So anybody who wants to learn how to play uh, Hong Kong Mahjong, Wright-Patterson Mahjong, even Ricci and MCR, which I'm still learning myself. 
there's enough there to learn how to play the game. And so I thought, why keep doing the same videos again and again when the rule sets are stable? Nothing new will be coming out for the Asian versions. So I would just be churning out the same content. So instead of continuing the recurring videos for those versions, I would just do live sh or live let's play live streams on Sunday nights and then strategy theory during on Fridays only and alternate the different versions to continue offering content for those players but also to help me stay in the game and and continue to learn in those other versions because I want to push myself as a player as well and then by doing that down uh, niche down I am opening up my schedule to focus on American Mahjong using National Mahjong League rules, which is what most of the viewers watch and play. And so most of the videos that will be published are going to be red, white, and blue American Mahjong. So one of the comments that I get often, or not often, I shouldn't say, but I do get recurring comments saying, I'm getting way too many emails you know, because I upload every day and I upload different versions, but at least now most of those notifications are going to be red, white, and blue, American Mahjong. You can watch them or not. And then uh, also there is a way for you to create inbox rules for your email. I will try to put some information in the video description. If you are bothered by the volume of emails that you get because of my YouTube channel. If you subscribed and get notifications, you click that little gray bell. If, if the volume of emails is bothersome, I can understand why. First, let me say that. Uh, I think that might get on my nerves too. But what you could do is create an inbox rule that allows only the versions that you're interested in. For example, let's say that you only, you only want to do the four-player game. So in your inbox rule, you would put the word Siamese Mahjong as not allowing that particular title email to come through. And then only the four player videos would come through your inbox. So I'll try to put some information in, in the video description so that you can look into that. But it really depends on your email client, you know, whether you use Hotmail, Gmail, Outlook, whether you use a Mac and whatever, I don't know what the, the email client is for that, but they all have different steps in order to create an inbox rule. But that's what you would do to be able to filter only the emails that you're interested in. And then of course you could always join my Facebook group because I post every video that I upload, I put in a post on Facebook with a link. So you could always find the videos that way too. If you don't want to subscribe and click the bell. Okay, let me just double check in here to see if I've missed anything. Okay, someone said you're in a phase where you're getting up at around 4 a.m. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You've been my constant companion in those wee hours. <laughs> Oh my goodness, 4 a.m. I'm a night owl. I, I have a hard time going to bed before midnight. And sometimes I have, it takes me probably an hour to fall asleep. It's just the way I've always been. I have a very hard time falling asleep and I'm a night owl. So I, I kind of understand that a little bit, but I, I'm not good about getting up. I, since I go to bed late, I have a hard time getting up early. All right, let's see. Um, Peggy said, I like the beginner and advanced live streams, okay, but not the time of day, like evening time better. Okay, well, the let's see, uh, so Peggy's on the East Coast, that's hard. What I was, the reason I was thinking during the day is because the nighttime live stream on Sunday night, that's every Sunday night, I thought if we did a daytime, that that would be a, a different audience and because some people can't live stream in the evening especially a Sunday night they might have family night or something like that and during the week 
I thought dur- to have it during the day because for me, my husband and I will eat dinner together and watch Fringe. <laughs> We're kind of binge watching Fringe. So we'll sit together in front of a fire and watch uh, Netflix. Um, so if I were to do nighttime, I thought that would take away from family time from people. So we'll see. I think what I'd like to do is get input from everybody. And if a nighttime live stream is better for most people, then we'll switch it to a nighttime and uh, we can binge watch Netflix on the weekends. So I'll keep that in mind, Peggy. I'm going to take a, um, you know, a poll. Maybe I'll even create a poll on uh, my Facebook group so that people could chime in and we'll see stats of what, what is most, what would be best for most people and do the live streams there. So I'll do a couple of polls, one about beginner and advanced, two separate sessions, and then one for the time. And let's see, Gloria, if I do super sickers, do I have a lot of computer stuff? I'm sorry, I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm sorry. Um, jingles. Okay, Martha says, hey, everyone, Michelle's Facebook is wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I really, the, the Facebook group is, is more a, um, about conversation. Of course, YouTube is more about the videos, but even in the Facebook group, I try to have my videos announced there with a link because not everybody subscribes on YouTube. So it's kind of, you know, two heads of the same coin, Facebook and YouTube. And I don't use any other social media. I tried to create an inst Instagram I've tried to do Twitter early on, and I just can't. I oh, Not only do I not have the time, but I find that they're kind of a time sink. I mean, they suck you in, and I have very little time to spare as it is. So I think I can barely handle Facebook and YouTube, and that's pretty much it for me. Uh, let's see, Martha, 4 a.m. is a bit horrific, but I'm making good use of my time with the videos. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad. I'm very happy to hear that. And I hope to have lots more of interesting content coming up. I've got so many videos in my pipeline that I've been wanting to make, and I haven't been able to get to them because I've been doing all the recurring videos. They've taken all my time. So... Uh, I've enjoyed doing them, don't get me wrong, I've enjoyed it and I've learned so much by doing those videos, especially for Ricci and Mahjong competition rules. If I weren't doing those recurring videos, I don't think I would be at the level that I'm at at the moment. I'm still a beginner. I, I kind of consider myself to be, I don't know if there's such a thing as an advanced beginner. I don't yet consider myself to be intermediate because I have so much to learn especially with Ricci Mahjong. It's, it's a very strategic game. So there's a lot of advanced stuff that I just have not yet studied and, and applied. There's so much more to learn. And the other thing is I want to, I want to continue to do those other versions because I think that what I learn playing the Asian versions can sometimes be applied to American Mahjong. So the more I experience and learn as in other versions, I can apply some concepts throughout and try to help other people shorten their learning curve. That's my hope and my plan for continuing. So any other questions? I'm looking through here to see if anybody has any other questions. I don't think I've missed anything. If anyone has any questions about the new schedule coming up, now's a good time to ask as well, just to recap if you haven't seen my channel update the new schedule is going to be 
Amer the four player game videos will be released on Mondays and the live streams will be Tuesdays and Thursdays based on a couple comments from tonight we'll probably start by having a beginner session on Tuesdays and then an advanced on Thursdays but of course you're welcome to come to either one so Tuesday Thursday for live streams Mondays for recurring skill builder videos then on Wednesdays will be Siamese Mahjong and it's interesting because I'm hearing more and more people say that they almost prefer the two-player game to the four-player game and some people even like the Royal Siamese or Royale I think is what they call it uh, where you play uh, four players with two hands each it's amazing where it's gone so Wednesdays will be Siamese Mahjong for now. Uh, we'll see where that goes because some anytime a new version is released in at Mahjong time, I may I may change the schedule and try to incorporate that. And I, I won't divulge anything because that's I, I'm not some people think that I own Mahjong Time. I don't. I just play there. And I am an affiliate, but I don't make decisions there. And I, I'm not employed by Mahjong Time at all. I, I'm an affiliate. I promote it. I help bring awareness about Mahjong Time because I do believe it's the best place to play. So, oh, that's another way that you can help the channels to join Mahjong Time. Um, because I am an affiliate there, I do get... Um, compensated for anybody who actually plays at Mahjong time if they uh, try it out and then convert to an actual paid member I do get a commission so that helps my channel a lot between Mahjong time and YouTube I've been able to sustain my so my software subscriptions and I've been able to invest in equipment like lighting um, software and then also I just bought a new camera that I'm trying to learn. I, I am filming, in the process of filming a solitaire video and it's not quite going the way I want it to, but it could be because I'm on a learning curve. So we'll see what happens there. I, I've got to work it out and learn. I'm on a learning curve with that camera. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, um, so yeah, all, all those ways of helping the channel will help me reinvest back into the channel so that I can improve the quality of the videos and increase the, the variety as well. All right, let's see if I've missed anything here. Um, okay, Marie, welcome. I, she commented that she's learned so much by watching. Excellent. That's my hope. All right, we actually did an open forum for an hour and a half. Oh my gosh, I think this is longer than what, I think, you know what I was thinking? That this was a Let's Play live stream and I was gonna go from seven to 8.30, but this was supposed to be just a table talk. One hour is usually what table talk is. So we've exceeded the time slot. <laughs> Sorry about that for anybody who has things that they've gotta do. We probably should end this table talk. But it's been a, a wonderful opportunity. I'm so thankful that you all came and that you joined me tonight. I hope that you learned some things about me and my channel and why I do what I do. And I also had a great opportunity to hear from you on what you want to see and where you want to see the channel go. Because this is I see this as symbiotic. We are a team. So I want to, you know, uh, share my passion. But hearing from you is just as important to me so that I'm sure to provide content that you like which is why I've niched down because most of my viewers are American Mahjong players so that's what I'm gonna do American Mahjong videos will be my focus all right let's see uh, would you Glory said would you do uh, would you do teaching verses on how to play on Mahjong time I use a notebook with a keypad. I have some helpful tips videos on Mahjong Time and I do monitor 
tech support questions that I sometimes get. And anytime I see the same kind of question, I'll add to that video list. Right now, I, I don't see any recurring videos that I haven't already, or recurring problems that I haven't already covered. Uh, let's see, Gloria said, thank you. Okay, Linda, always happy to spend time with you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, if nobody has any other questions, at least right now, we'll uh, take it more to the comments section in the Facebook group. You can always ask me questions under any video, and you can always post questions on my Facebook group. If you have any suggestions, please comment under videos or post them on Facebook, or you could even find my email in the video description. Send me an email with your ideas, and I'll add videos to the pipeline. I, I get comments and that inspire me to create videos and I actually get recommendations too from viewers uh, who have helped me to improve what I do and how I do it. Like uh, one of the viewers or a couple of viewers actually asked for me to pause after I get a drawn hand and ask what would you do and that inspired me to create the random pulls where every after every hand uh, is is displayed, I pause. I wouldn't have done that had someone not mentioned it. So please keep the suggestions coming and uh, continue to comment and like, subscribe, and share because that will help bring more awareness to the channel, help YouTube find or promote the channel so more and more people can find it. Thank you so much for joining me tonight and for asking questions and uh, having a conversation with me. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing. Be sure to click that little gray bell. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.